Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to how to build a space shuttle in KSP. My name is Root Negative and on screen is what we are going to be building today. This is a shuttle, not the shuttle. And hopefully this video will show you how to build one of your own. Don't be afraid to pause the video or re-watch multiple times. I've had to condense a lot to fit the build into a reasonable length episode. Lastly, don't be afraid to ask for help here in the comments. When the shuttle is done, it will be capable of lifting a full orange tank to orbit along with a maximum crew of 8 before returning safely to Kerbin. This build consists of zero modded parts. I use MechJeb for Delta V information and RCS build aid to tell me if the shuttle is controllable when under power. First, we're going to start off with the Mark III crew cabin. We'll throw a nose cone on the front. Next, we're going to grab the large cargo bay followed by the Mark III monopropellant tank. This is going to be our OMS fuel or Orbital Maneuvering System OMS. We've got a few new parts in 1.0.5, we'll be using one now. The Mark III engine attachment goes behind the monoprop tank. This is where we'll bolt the engines on. We're going to want some way of accessing the cargo bay, so I like to put a Mark II crew cabin on the forward bulkhead. We'll grab an octagonal strut, make sure angle snap is on, and place it on the cockpit. Then attach the Mark II crew cabin to that strut. Then select rotate mode and spin the cabin until it is vertical. At the moment our shuttle has no docking capability. Using the Mark II docking port, attach it to the top of the cubic octag and then rotate until it is horizontal. Gizmo it around to make sure it doesn't intersect with the payload bay. Now is a great time to make sure our orange tank is going to fit. Throw a large battery onto the rear bulkhead, a senior docking port, another docking port and then the orange tank. Time for the engines. The KS25s are new in 1.0.5. They have a massive gimbal range that we will take advantage of later. Most importantly, put them on in one time symmetry. We'll need to adjust the angle of them towards the roof by one click in angle snap. There are many ways to do the OMS structure. This is just one way. I use the small 1.25 meter tanks. Gizmo them around until you're happy with their position. Because I'm using monoprop for my ohms fuel, we need to fabricate an ohms thruster block. Using the monoprop engine with angle snap on, place them around the back of the tank like so. Rotate them until they are horizontal. The Ohm's thruster block doesn't need to be strong. A thruster weight of 0.5 is more than sufficient. You only need a couple of hundred delta V. Once you've got the thruster block sorted and everything is still looking good, it's time for the tail. Pro tip on this one, I've slowed the video down a bit. Notice I have the tail in two times symmetry. We're going to be placing two tails, but using them as one. Place them on the vertical and then gizmo them around until they look good. Next, right click on the tail and click deploy. This will show you what way they will extend. If they clip through each other like it does on mine, click invert. Now we have a tail that acts like a normal tail in flight, but also splits apart and gives us some aero breaking when we need it. Nifty, huh? Be sure to turn off roll and pitch control for the tail. It only gets in the way your and braking only for this one. I've left the wings until last for a very good reason. Don't put the wings on until you've got everything on the shuttle. Absolutely everything. Next pro tip, when putting the wings on, flip the ship upside down. Makes things so much easier. Grab the Delta shuttle wings and put them on the shuttle. We'll fix the positioning with gizmos like so. 
make sure you open the cargo bay to check the wings don't clip into the interior space. The big strikes are next. Throw them on, adjust with the gizmos until they look good. There are two kinds of elevons. They are made to go in a certain configuration. Put the smaller ones to the outside and the larger ones to the inside. Once you have them roughly placed, use gizmos to get them right. You don't want the elevons clipping through the body too much. Also, you want clearance from the KS25 engines. Those bad boys do gimbal a long way. Disable yaw for both sets of elevons. They are for roll and pitch only. The tail will take care of yaw for us. Next, we need some landing gear. I use the medium ones as the large set look a little too big for my taste. Gizmos are your friends as always. Place them roughly and adjust until they look good. When placing the nose gear, make sure you have angle snap turned on. That way you'll definitely place it in the middle. Also, remember to turn off brakes for the nose gear. Landing shuttles can be interesting, so I like to put some chutes on the back of my shuttle, just to help with slowing down once we're on the ground. The following step is the most critical in the design of your orbiter. Turn on the center of mass and center of lift. We need to get the blue arrow to be closer to the yellow and black dot. This will determine how well or poorly the shuttle will fly. I've slowed this down so you can see how I do it. I just gizmo the wing forward until I'm happy with the position. Before we move on, now is a great time to test your orbiter. Strap some SRBs to it and see how it flies. Alternatively, using HyperEdit, you can hack the ship into orbit and do some re-entries to see how it'll fly. Building a shuttle is pretty advanced. Don't be afraid of a bit of trial and error. If you're stuck, ask for help. If there are any issues with how it flies though, you want to fix them now, because the next step is building the launch stack, which consists of the big external tank and the two smaller boosters. Move over to the VAB and load in your shuttle from the space plane hangar. Our first step is to attach a decoupler and one of the huge NASA tanks like so. We want to build out the external tank using this form factor. Feel free to mix and match the size of the tanks to get it to the right height. Also, keep an eye on the total DV here. We're looking for about 4200 uh, meters per second in total. Also, ensure your payload has a full orange tank in it. That way we're designing the launch stack for the maximum possible payload. To keep the part count down, I use the biggest tanks where possible. The Mark III 2.5 fuel adapter makes an okay top for the tank. It allows me to use the big white nose cone to finish the look of the external tank. Also, it allows us to carry fuel in that space. Using a structural adapter would mean less fuel. Now it's time to run the fuel lines. This part is a little tricky. Basically, we want the fuel to drain from the bottom of the tank to the top. This helps with the shuttle stability as we burn the fuel. I'm using the small hard points with crossfeed disabled. They run from the top of the tank to the bottom and then into the orbiter. Fuel logic is a bit backwards. The reason this works is the fuel is pulled from the furthest tank first. Because the orbiter is effectively attached to the top of the tank via the hard points and fuel lines, this means the tank at the bottom is the one furthest from. Take that, gravity. <laughs> Your rules do not apply to my space program. Test it on the launch pad a few times to make sure it works. You should see the fuel being burned from the bottom of the external tank. The boosters I'm going to use are going to be liquid fueled. 
it allows for us to have more control over them. Using the hydraulic separator, I'm going to attach them to the big 2.5 meter tanks on either side. I just build out the boosters like so, keep an eye on the DV readouts as well. I grab the Mammoth engines, however they aren't needed, I swap them out from mainsails, which uh, gives us a better thrust to weight overall. I found that the boosters unbalance the stack a little, so here's a little trick. If you go to mirror symmetry, you press R on the keyboard, you can put them closer to the orbiter like so. What this does is it moves the mass just enough so that the engine gimbal can overcome the imbalance. It's a fairly advanced stuff. Um, RCS build aid is what is showing me the big red circle. By switching the engine gimbals, I can see what we will have in terms of rotation in both directions. Uh, this means that the shuttle should should be controllable, but uh, don't hold your breath. Uh, out on the launch pad we go. I've shown you how to build it, now I'll show you how to fly it. On launch, I fire up the KS-25s on the shuttle first before punching everything else. I also have the stick full back. The shuttle tends to buck and go sideways off the paddle. It just needs a little bit of backwards lean to get the vector point in the right direction. From here, it's a normal ascent to orbit. Start to pitch over pretty much straight away. 45 degrees at 10 kilometers is what we're aiming for. You can see though, I have a bit of a roll on my shuttle. We're actually going sideways at this point. I basically stay in it though to cancel out some of the inclination that developed in the early ascent. I also throttle down to ensure I don't go too quick. We're now approaching booster flame out. When they flame out, kill the engines and stage. The attitude of the shuttle should mean the boosters clear the ship without hitting anything. From there, power on and work towards orbit. Once we've established our target apoapsis, set up a maneuver and begin to circularize. We're going to use the external tank for as long as we can, but we don't want space junk. So once we have a periapticus that is around 40 or 50 kilometers, we're going to ditch the tank and circularize on the ohm system. Once the tank is gone, fire up the ohms and complete the orbital insertion. Time to deploy our payload. One full orange tank. Ta-da! With our payload delivered, it's now time to return to the KSC. I target a periapsis of around 30 kilometers just to the west of the KSC. Re-entries with the shuttle of fun. Hitting them spank bang on is a matter of trial and error. The re-entry is different for different designs as well, as there are a lot of variables that determine where you'll fetch up. The lift, the drag, so on and so forth. For re-entry, you want to hold an angle of attack of approximately 30 to 40 degrees. I found that with my shuttle, an angle of attack greater than 30 degrees let me slow down quicker. It's a pretty tricky tr thing though. You can see here that I'm overshooting the runway. It's too late now, we're too high, too fast. We'll perform what I like to call the Valentina roll. Basically, we put the shuttle on its roof and pull back as hard as possible. The downside to this approach is it's going to be fast. Generally, your approach to the runway will be at about a 30 degree down angle. 
Shuttles don't glide particularly well, so you want to avoid a stall by keeping it quite steep. You can see me trying to bleed some speed, my approach was roughly 50 degrees down. Uh, it's about now I realised my gear wasn't down, I got that down. Whoa, nearly! <laughs> Whoa, nearly! Woo, up there! In the words of the great Jebediah, any landing you can walk away from is a great landing. Hope this helped. Enjoy building your own shuttle. The craft file is in the description for you to download and fly if you wish. Thank you for joining me. Goodbye.